goal of this tutorial is to build a circuit which will turn on and off three LED lights in a sequence such that it represents the operation of a traffic light. The schematic shown, the pins at the top represent the pins from the BS2 OEM board. On the right side, there is a 12 volt line that will come from your power supply circuit and a ground, which will also come from your power supply circuit. Notice that the 12 volt line is not only powering the BS2 OEM module, but also is attached to the collector on the transistors. This setup is used so that the BS2 module is not powering the LEDs itself, but rather controlling a transistor that can handle much more power. This is, the only, this is only an example of what you will be doing for your project. Let us look more closely at the schematic and analyze what exactly is happening. In the next section, we will program the BS2 module to turn on and off P0, P1, and P2. These outputs are attached to a resistor, R1, R2, and R3, and finally to the base pin on the transistor. R1, R2, and R3 are important to protect the transistor from being damaged. When the output pins turn on or off, the transistor will either allow or prevent current to pass from the collector to the emitter, thus turning on or off the LED. R4, R5, and R6 were all calculated based on the current need and forward voltage of each LED. You can find that information on the LED datasheet. On the transistor datasheet, it will show us which pins are the base, collector, and emitter. It is imperative that you check the datasheet and pinouts for any component you use to ensure that you do not wire the part incorrectly and possibly cause damage to the part. Here is the pinout we need. As we can see from the figure, pin 1 goes to the base, pin 2 is the collector, and pin 3 is the emitter. We must cross-reference this image to the image previously shown in order to wire the transistor correctly. Here is the circuit wired up on the breadboard. For my power source, I am using a breadboard power supply which can be seen behind the BS2 module. For your project, you will need to use the output from the power supply circuit that you built. I color coded the wire so that I could easily identify which wire was attached to what component in case I needed to troubleshoot. The green wires represent the ground on the breadboard. The white wires are from the voltage output of the power supply. The orange wire on the far left is attached to the reset button, which isn't needed but sometimes handy to have. The blue, yellow, and other orange wire are attached to the output of the BS2 module. Here is a close-up of the BS2 module. In the close-up of the transistors, we can see resistors R1, R2, and R3 that are wired to the blue, yellow, and orange wires from the BS2 module. The white wire again is the voltage supply from the breadboard. R4, R5, and R6 are also to the right of each transistor attached to pin 3 and finally we have the LEDs which are wired to the resistor and to ground. When you first open the basic stamp editor software you should have a window that looks similar to mine. This main area is for inputting code which will then be downloaded onto the basic stamp. The first thing that we should do is to make sure that the basic stamp is properly connected to the computer. We can do so by clicking on this button up here that says identify. You should have a window that comes up that looks similar to mine. The port number is what port your computer has assigned to the basic stamp and most likely will differ between different groups or even different times that you plug in your stamp. You want to make sure that it does show the device type, the loopback, and the echo. If it does not show the device type or the loopback or echo or no, then you need to check with a TA and find out what is wrong. If everything looks good, you can go ahead and close that window. And now we need to let the software know what kind of stamp we are actually using. We can come up to this taskbar up here. And if we mouse over each one, it will tell us what kind of mode each one represents. For example, this stamp mode is for the BS2PX, this one for the BS2PE, the BS2P, the BS2SX, the BS2E, and finally we have the BS2, which is what we need. So if you click on that, a little box may show up. Um, this is just letting you know that it's inserting something into your code. You can simply just click OK. You'll notice it has now inserted this line of code. 
This tells the compiler software what kind of chip you are working with so that it can program the chip properly. If it doesn't know or the wrong chip is selected, then your software will not work on the chip. Here's an example that I created to turn on and off the LEDs so that they resemble a traffic light. The first thing we need to do is declare our variables. We use variables to store information in, which in this case they store the port number that the program will be using. It is always a good idea to name variables so their function can be easily identified. It is also a good idea to use comments. On any given line, anything that is followed by an apostrophe will be ignored by the compiler and is simply to help others understand what is going on within the program. As the comment says, green underscore LED is our variable and it is defined as a byte. Defining the variable as a byte is a way to tell the program how much memory it needs to allocate to that variable. There are different sizes of variables. A bit can be either 0 or 1. A nib, which is short for a nibble, can be 0 to 15. A byte can hold values between 0 and 255. And a word can hold values between 0 and 65,535. You need to choose which size would best fit your program. And since we aren't using anything over 255, we will go with a byte. After our variables are declared, we need to set them to a value. Since the green LED is wired to P0, we want green underscore LED variable to be set to 0. Next is the start statement. This is representing a memory location that this function will be stored in. This comes in handy for several reasons, but for this case it will make it very easy for us to restart the pattern by simply telling the program to go back to start. Within the start function, the program will be turning LEDs on and off. The high command makes the pin that follows the command go high or to 5 volts. When one of the output pins that we have connected to a transistor goes high, the transistor will allow current to flow between the collector and emitter, which will turn on the LED. The low command makes the pin that follows the command go low. Pause followed by a number will cause the program to pause for however many milliseconds you enter. Go to tells the program to go to a location that is followed by that command, which in this case is start. So after the start function runs, the go to sends it right back to the beginning. Notice that during the program, only one output pin is high at any given time. We could turn on more than just one, but on traffic signals you only see one light on at a time. Now it is time to program the BS2 module. Within the toolbar that the identify button is located, you will see a blue play button. This button compiles your code and programs it to the chip. Once you click on the play button, you will see another window pop up that will show you the progress of the download. Once the download reaches 100%, your LED should start lighting up. As seen in this video, the code is cycling through the green, yellow, and red LEDs just like a traffic light.